So you want to learn how to use DaVinci Resolve, but you don't know exactly where to start, and you've seen some other YouTube videos around, and you've looked at them all, and they all look super complicated. Uh, well, I'm here to tell you today that DaVinci Resolve is really not that hard, and I can take you through a couple easy steps to get you on the path straight through to being a better video editor and getting more content put out on YouTube so that you can promote your Twitch channel, your Instagram you know, whatever else, or just promote your YouTube and make better content. There are a little couple of tips and tricks that I use every single day for video editing. So uh, let's get over into it. So when you first open up DaVinci Resolve, you'll get a splash screen that quite literally says DaVinci Resolve. It'll have a picture. It'll start loading things up. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to do an a new project or you can just double click on the untitled project either one of the two um we'll just do we'll just do a new project and call it classroom we'll create and then you'll see like everything will go off screen for a minute so i have my setup a little bit different than the initial setup i'm pretty sure it's a little bit different than the initial setup because i use uh, my media pool i actually pull it pretty large so that I can see my clips over here um, and then I have my toolbox down here with all of my video transitions and audio effects um, all of my fair light effects if you will and you know there's there's all kinds of extra effects that you can use so the first thing is first with DaVinci Resolve what you need to do is make sure that the the clips that you're trying to pull and put into DaVinci Resolve are in .mov or .mp4. Those are the two formats that work best with DaVinci Resolve and they are not on an external device such as your Sony A5100 camera. They're not on a GoPro, they're actually on your computer. Um, there's something with the encoding from cameras and GoPros and whatever else to DaVinci Resolve that it won't let them pull straight from there. You have to put them on your computer first and then pull them over. So I actually have quite a bit of footage that I have just from clips and, and from things that I have saved and, and gotten done. Uh, so I'm going to grab just a couple of clips here. I think I've got five clips. And I'm just going to copy them over. If you get this message here, that means that your clips and your timeline are on two different frames per second. So right now I know that my clips are at 60 frames per second and my timeline defaults to 24 frames per second. So I'm going to go ahead and change it so that my clips when I pull them into the timeline also run at 60 frames per second. And I can double check that right here. Um, on the cog wheel down at the bottom, right, right in this area here. It was at 24 because that is your standard cinematic look. 60 frames per second is better for video gameplay and for catching all of those little special things that you do on your streams. Except for yourself. We use 24 frames per second like to shoot movies, to shoot yourself walking around and things like that because the 24 frames per second make it so that you actually have that natural motion blur. And that natural motion blur makes you feel like you're actually watching a person, which is why at 60 frames per second, we also have motion blur embedded into the video games. Uh, so if your screen is not showing like this, you can go up here and click this inspector tab on. So if I don't have the inspector tab clicked, it shows like I have two screens. So this is a preview screen. This is actually what is on the timeline. I don't care to use it that way. I prefer to have the inspector up so I can tell like if I want this to be super zoomed in right here or zoomed way back out. So now you can see I have this beautiful clip here which is pulled from some gameplay where Oh good night bitch. <laughs> can some natural video is okay at at 24 frames per second so if you notice my audio here is way higher 
than the actual clip, and I don't need all of this extra stuff. So I don't need all of this extra stuff. Thank you for doing the stream today. So um, here, I'm probably going to end it close to this point. So you can find a point where you're really, really close to what you're trying to do. I'm going to go ahead and mute the audio because I don't need to hear it over and over and over and over as I'm doing this. Um, so you get it close to the point where you think you're going to do your first cut. Right? So I see myself running in and you can grab this little orange knob right here and you can scrub. It's called scrubbing. It's moving back and forth. You can scrub to a place where you think that your clip is going to end. And then you can use your left and right arrow keys to go frame by frame. So here I'm going to just click the, the right arrow key and go single frame by single frame. And I think where I'm going to stop is a few frames back. So I'm just going to go back right here right to there so that's the frame that i want to stop my clip on yeah left and right mouse keys they're right they're right here it's the left and right mouse keys <laughs> um <clears throat> so i found that exact frame where i want to stop this entire clip so now i can hit my left control and the b key so left control and b Cuts the clip, so now I can pull this off, right? And you'll see this clip only goes to that frame that I wanted it cut at. So it literally will just stop right there, perfectly. So a couple of things that we can do because we have the clip that we want this is all extra so everything that i have highlighted and moved off is now erroneous material so we can actually hit our backspace key not delete do not hit the delete key because you will kill the entire timeline the delete key is like a nuclear bomb in davinci resolve your your delete key will kill your entire timeline the backspace key is what will delete what is selected. It will remove what is selected. Let's put it that way. That way we don't get delete and remove and all of that. Whatever. Um, so the backspace key removes that erroneous extra clippage that we have there. Um, and then we can start moving into our next clip. So our next clip... It looks like it's a small clip already. We'll see what it actually is. Um, oh yeah, we already did this. So I think this clip is already cut down. So there's a little bit left on this clip where at the end here, we can maybe trim it down just a bit. So we're going to left key until we find that spot where we can actually clip it off. And because it's 60 frames a second, it's going to be quite a few clicks. Um, but right. I like right there. That's where I'm going to do. So again, we do control B. And then we highlight the selected instance that we don't want to have. And we hit the backspace key. And that removes the erroneous... Um, the excess of that clip. So pretty easy. I will actually type up and post or find a place that has all of the shortcuts in it. Um, you can go into your, um, your menu up here and look at all of the different, um, shortcuts and hotkeys here. But it doesn't tell you exactly what they do. So like the razor being control B. Who the fuck actually knows what a razor is when you first start it? Nobody. There's not a single person that knows. Like, oh, razor probably means that it's going to just 
cut the clip. That could mean you're switching to a whole different mode. So I will I will copy off the most common ones that I use and place them in my Discord. Um, and you guys can find them there. So now we have the issue of how do we get these two clips to transition into something that looks a little more beautiful. I just want to thank you guys again for watching this section of the video. There are going to be more parts as I make more videos for uh, learning DaVinci Resolve and getting you guys all the information that I can in a very simplistic manner uh, because I know that's how I learn the best. And if you would like to check these out live, um, I do stream on Twitch. The link is in the description below. Um, I stream Tuesday through Saturday, 5 o'clock p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. And um, I hope to see you guys there. And if you found this video useful at all, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And uh, yeah, I'll see you for part two of this video very soon.